Hey everybody, welcome back to the live case break. Today we are doing a master case of 2021 Diamond Kings. We've done this product once before. I think it was about two or three weeks ago and uh, when it first came out. But with no new releases last week or this week, I figured let's go ahead and do uh, this case one more time. I had one master case left over and uh, we're breaking that tonight. So before we start... We have to randomize this. This is a team break, so everybody gets one random team. There's 30 teams, so that was actually the reason why we were a little bit late today. I had to type up the list of all 30 teams, put them in alphabetical order, get all your names in random.org and type those in. And uh, also had soccer practice tonight, so running just a little bit behind, so I had to push the break back a little bit, so sorry about that. But we're ready to go now, and we are ready to run the randomizer. So let me bring in my laptop real quick. And then what I'll do is I will uh, I'll cut the lights here. I will copy and paste all of the uh, information into the text box. All right, so here you can see this is all of the people who bought into this break. There's 30 total names here, starting with Lloyd and going the whole way down to... Uh, K and L. So we're going to randomize this one time. Then I'll copy and paste those names, and then I'm going to drop it into the list, this list over here, which will match you up with the team. These teams are all in alphabetic quarter. All 30 teams are there from the Angels all the way down through the Yankees. So let's go ahead and get started. Do this real quick one time for the randomizer. Let's go ahead and hit that randomizer button. Let me make this a little bit larger so hopefully you can see it. And there's the button. Here we go. Randomize one time. And, okay, random.org uses cookies. Okay. So here we go. I'm just going to copy and paste all of these names that you see here. We'll zoom in a little bit to show you so you can see them on your screen. Nice and... All right, so we've got Zach getting the first team. So, Zach, you're going to get the Angels. Then we have Steve, Joe, Lloyd, Jack, Joshua, Chris Mills. By the way, we have two Chris Mills, it appears like. So I had to put a little star there. Two people with the same name, I think. Then we have Michael, and then we have Cape Cod, then Manuel, then Tammy, Harris, Raymond, Philip, Richard, Sean, Patrick, Brandon, Brenton, Joe, Scott, Jack, William, Edward, Andrew, Zachary, Sean, k &L, Derek, and the last one there, down at the bottom is uh, Daniel Martinez. All right, so let me copy and paste all these names now. Whoops, I don't even know what I just hit. Copy and paste. All right, copy and paste. So it's just going to match up all of your names. So now, if we scroll that over, you can see the team that you have, and I will copy and paste this into the uh text box for you so there's your teams you can take a look at what you've got i won't re read down through those i'll scroll down through you can find your name and see who you've got in this break and i'll flip the lights back on we'll start to rip these sorry about the uh, little bit of clerical work there that needed done but we're ready to go let me just go ahead and get that into the uh video text box so that people that weren't here to see the randomizer can see it save all right, we're all set. Should be in the, the video description now for anybody that wants to see it. I'll try to keep this off the camera or off camera off to the side so I can look at it from time to time and just uh, see who's getting the hits and uh, call out, you know, who gets what. So let's go ahead and get started with our first box. This is a grand total of 24 boxes. They're all hobby boxes. Let's go ahead and get ripping into this. 12 packs per box. There will be one autograph and one relic per box. Hoping that the autos are pretty good. Sam says, hey, Jabs, for your Patreon page, how do you get higher tiers and get the monthly boxes? You have to sign up for a higher tier. Like, the most popular tier is the $51 tier. You get a box and packs sent to you each month. Um, we also have a $99 tier. And by the way... I did secure three cases of 2021 Bowman blaster boxes. So those are going, I don't know what those, what do those go for? Like $50, $60 a piece. So um, I can tell you that one, I'm still working on everything, but one of the blasters for the hundred, the $99 people 
is going to be a Bowman Blaster. I wish I could get some more, but they're super expensive. And um, I put out some feelers today to a couple guys, and I'm trying to get 2021 Top Series 2 for the $51 tier, folks. In a perfect world, I'd be able to get Series 2 and the Bowman for the $99 tier. That's what my goal is. We'll see. I think the release date's June 9th, but sometimes the blaster cases get pushed back. Sometimes they can come out a couple weeks later, which is kind of annoying. Alan says, what team did I get? Go ahead and look down in the, the uh, description box, and you should see it there. Reggie says, 40 to 45 bucks for Bowman Blasters. Yeah, they are definitely very expensive, and people are flipping them, unfortunately. Can't find them in the stores because people grab them for 20 and sell them for 45. All right, here we go. What's this? We have a spacer. All right, so the way the team break works is whenever we have an old time player like the New York Giants, of course, ended up moving out to San Francisco. So that card would go to the Giants, San Francisco Giants. All right, so I will be sorting and sleeving all these over the next uh, week. Or so. There's a Joey Bart rookie card. Luis Robert, who's hurt. Despite Luis Robert being hurt, the White Sox are the best team in baseball. Doing very, very well this year. We've got a Shirt and Apostle, Texas Rangers rookie card. Shohei Otani, the big guy, leading the majors in home runs with 14. Did you buy yourself uh, some 2018 Tops Update or 2018 Series 2 yet? You, you better. Because those are going to just go, go sky high, especially if Otani wins the MVP this year. We've got a Pee Wee Reese. Look at this. A bat relic of Pee Wee Reese. That is a nice one right there. Game used bat from Pee Wee Reese, who played shortstop for the Brooklyn Dodgers, right alongside Jackie Robinson. So that is a pretty legendary one right there. Now, of course, the Brooklyn Dodgers aren't around anymore, but they moved to Los Angeles. So this card goes to the Los Angeles Dodgers owner, which is Manuel Pacheco. So, Manuel, congratulations on that. Someone said there's bad video quality. YouTube probably set you up at 144p. Go to your video settings, click that little gear at the bottom of the screen, and bump it up a little bit. And that will take care of you after a few seconds. Pee Wee Reese is hit number one. There's going to be another hit in this box. It's going to be an autograph. I, I bet you it's going to be a, a crappy autograph. They kind of do that. They'll give you a really cool uh, hit like the, the Pee Wee Reese. There's Joe Adele rookie card. Um, spacer alert. Hey, we might have the downtown insert coming up, which if that's the case, those are worth a good bit of money. I don't know what they go for anymore, but uh, they were going for around $100 when this product first came out a couple weeks ago. Let's see who that one's going to be. As we look for our autograph, it is going to be the downtown, and it's Joey Bart. I bet you that's probably about a $50 card right there. So the Giants is going to be uh, looking pretty good right now. Who's got the... Uh, the Giants. Tammy Decker gets this one. Joey Bart going to Tammy Decker. We'll get that one top loaded up for you. All right, next up. Got Ryan Mountcastle in there. And here's the autograph. It's Davey Garcia from the New York Yankees. It is his game-used jersey, and it's also an autograph. That one goes to our Yankees owners. Scroll down. That's going to Daniel Martinez. So, Daniel, congratulations on that. And that will do it for box number one of 24. So Pee Wee Reese and Davey Garcia were the hits. We'll see if uh, all the boxes are balanced out like that, where they give you a really nice relic, and then they give you kind of a crappy auto. But Davey Garcia is not that bad. He's got crazy good strikeout numbers. All right, box number two. Jeff says Tatis came back from the 10-day IL today and went four for four. Almost hit for the cycle. Hits the home run, raises his batting average 30 points. Yeah, he was hitting 240, so he's up to 270 now. How about that? Um, I guess Tatis Tuesday pumped him up. Yesterday we did a search of uh, Fernando Tatis rookie cards on the channel. Hopefully you got a chance to watch it. Here's box number two. And I, I, we did find some Tatis rookies. You'll have to check it out. 2019 is such a nice product. By the way, I picked up um, some 2018 update this week, so we'll be breaking that soon. Looking for Ronald Acuna Jr. 
And the Sotos and the Glabers and the Shane Biebers and the Otanis in there. I feel like that product has a good good chance of honestly like doubling in price again by the end of the year with Otani, Acuna, and Soto's been off to a bit of a slow start, but I think he's going to come on and do Juan Soto type things. All right, so the downtown case hit has been found, but I've got two inner cases, so I don't know if that, that, that's going to be coming up again or not. It might be. Mikey says, how big is my PC? I've got 2 million cards, but I am quickly whittling that down. I'd like to get that down to way, way less. I have uh, my entire garage. I have a three-car garage, and I cannot fit a single car in it because of all these boxes of cards. Pick up these collections all the time. Like, when I see 10,000 cards for 10 bucks, I, I, I can't help myself. I'm like, yeah, I'll grab that. All right, so we've got an Elegance, Manny Machado right there. Just got suspended for five games the other day for taking out Tommy Edmond with a pretty dirty slide, <coughs> tumbling in the middle of the base path. Jack says, what are your video plans for the rest of the week? Jazz Chisholm's back, by the way. And there's Spencer Howard. That's going to be a relic. So we're due for a pretty darn good auto, I bet, coming up. Spencer Howard for the Phillies. That's for Brenton McDaniel. <coughs> but I'll tell you what we've got coming up. We've got Throwback Thursday coming up tomorrow that's 2008 upper deck it is a hobby box that's going to have two relics and an autograph there's a casey mize reggie your stuff's on the sorting table just uh been very busy and haven't had a chance to get it out yet but my goal was to get it out by this weekend sent uh all of the 51 dollars tier stuff today so you, a lot of you on the 51 dollars tier should have received a notification about that yesterday or today all right, so still looking for the autograph. Let's see, there's Walker Bueller. Mickey Mantle, one of the last time you'll see Mantle with Panini. And the autograph should be coming up. There it is. It's Casey Mize. It's a pretty nice one right there, Casey Mize. His last start, he was pretty darn good. Um, very nice one right there. And Ike says, hey, pal, always another great live break. Sent you an email. Some important news going on. Make a note to check it out when you got time. Hit the like button, people. Ike, thank you very much, man. Really appreciate that. Hope you guys will consider giving Ike a follow. Probably the best artist definitely in this live stream right now. And one of the, just an awesome sports artist. I'll tell you what. You could put Ike's uh, works of art on Diamond Kings any day, and it would... Be just as good as these, if not better. Dylan Carlson, rookie card. Some of these good cards I always toss in a sleeve pile. I figured today I won't do that because I have to sort them out anyway. So once I get like a stack of a bunch of Dylan Carlson rookies, I'll just leave them all at once. All right, so that's box number two. Casey Mize, by the way, going to the Tigers. The Tigers are owned in this break by Sean Christensen. So, Sean, congratulations on that. Next box, box number three. It's Ike says Ike or Ed says Ike. Do you have a website where you sell the art? I think he does. I'm pretty sure he does. Feel free to drop your link, Ike. All right, box number three out of twenty-four. For those of you wondering how long we'll be here today, people always like to ask that question. I told Heather we'd probably be here for about an hour and a half. Stu says, did PSA go out of business? They are in a holding pattern right now. They don't want anyone to submit any cards because they're trying to get caught up and uh, kind of clear things out so there's not like a month-long wait. So they're just not accepting any new submissions until July right now. But they're very much still in business. Hey, there's Jack Townsend says, hey, Eric, how's it going? Spending my allowance here. Hey, man. <coughs> very, very generous super chat of you. 99 bucks. I really appreciate that. We've got Craig Maddox. So, Jack, you brought us some good luck. Hall of Famer Craig Maddox, right after the uh, Jack Townsend Super Chat. It's numbered out of 50 as well. 
You get a game-used bat that he used and also a jersey probably... I'm guessing that's from the Cubs, Cubs Road Uni right there. Jack, thank you very much. I hope you'll check him out. I thought of Jack the other day. I was watching some video. I can't remember who it was, but uh, there was a 15-year-old named Jack, and he had like a, like I don't know, $200,000 collection he was showing off at like a Miami card show. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if that's the Jack Townsend. Um, so thank you, man. Really, really appreciate the support. And another super chat popped up as well from Super Blood Wolf Moon it says... Thanks for keeping all this straight. I can't imagine sorting that many cards all the time. Super Blood Wolf Moon, thank you very much. That's one reason I don't like to do the team breaks, but every now and again, it's out of 99 elegance. I'll do it just for something different. And uh, we're winding down with school. There's only eight school days left, I think. There's Ryan Mountcastle, so I'll have way more time like, uh, what we got? Ten more hours a day once school winds down. Let's do that next stack. So maybe I'll do some more team breaks in the summer. Really appreciate the support, man. All right, so we got the Greg Maddox Hall of Fame Relic, so I'm guessing that we're going to have a really crappy auto in here. Some guy like uh, Jake Fraley, no offense to you Mariners fans out there, although you did get no hit last night by Spencer Turnbull. How about that? 288 earned run average. He's looking pretty good this year. Schumann says a series that you should start is Trash or Treasure Tuesday, where you get a couple boxes of cards that could have high-end rookies like 2018 update 2011 update yeah i'll tell you what that would be a pretty pretty interesting one because uh if you get a what's a blaster 2018 update go for like 300 plus dollars now after tax probably like 330 um anthony your stuff um will be coming to you this month uh, oh you're wondering what's coming it's a heritage box because it was supposed to be gypsy queen but they pushed that back till july plus four packs i'm trying to think what the packs are I think I just lost my train of thought. The packs are 2020 Series 2. Looking for uh, Luis Robert rookie card. And um, three other ones. You'll have to see what they are. There's Daz Cameron. That's the autograph. Daz Cameron right there for the Detroit Tigers. I just can't recall what they are off the top of my head because I've been doing a couple different tiers and diff different tiers get different packs. All right, let's see what else we've got in there. Daz Cameron, by the way, going to the Tigers once again. So Sean's got two hits right now. You're the leader right now in terms of total hits, I believe. There's Joey Bart, and that will do it for that one. Jack says, how much is a 2011 Tops Update Hobby Jumbo? Uh, I think it's like 17 grand or something like that. I don't know. It might be 20 grand now. I haven't checked the prices for a while. All right, next up, we've got box number four. See what we can find. And Ike says, oh, by the way, I paid for my booth at the National. Ike, I'm glad you brought that up. Is the National still going to happen on July 28th through, like, August 1st or whatever? Or is it going to be bumped back? I'm asking for myself because I've got something else that I might want to do in conjunction with the National. So, I, I don't know. Mikey says, are you doing all the sorting and shipping by yourself? Yep. Every aspect of this from start to finish is all me definitely need to hire somebody although heather did it heather did the uh, saturday showdown uh sleeving on saturday but everything else i've been keeping very busy with all right let's see what we can find in this next stack jeff says the national is still on schedule for as, as of right now yeah i don't see why they would postpone that it seems like the whole pandemic is subsiding very quickly in fact in texas they had zero deaths in the entire month of march and they're wide open they've been wide open you could they had they could have i think they had like forty thousand people at opening day no limits and uh looks like they made definitely the right choice down there let's see what we can find here we've got a harvey another tiger hit harvey coon from the detroit tigers dual relic right there that's a nice one. So the Tigers absolutely killing it. Sean Christensen with yet another hit. He's up to three. I think it's three. And that means there's going to be an autograph coming up. Let's see what else we have. Oh, 
Hope it's something good. Ike says they're planning on that date. All right, well, if it looks like it's going to happen, then I will try to get out there. <clears throat> I'll just have to figure out the logistics of it all. I've been going to the National every year since I've been doing the baseball cards primarily on my channel. I think first year I did it was 2018, I think. <clears throat> Here we go. Next one up. Yeah, 2018, and it was, was it in Cleveland, and then 2019 in Chicago, then 2020, they canceled it. There's Babe Ruth. I am going to, I don't know, be a little bit shocked at the sticker prices of all the stuff, I can tell you that. <laughs> I used to be the guy walking around there looking for wax boxes for five bucks and finding a bunch of them. I used to take carts, like a push cart in and take all the boxes in and out. Literally used to be able to find boxes all the time for five bucks. In fact, I think I bought one year. I can't remember exactly. My brother would probably remember. I think I bought like 40 boxes of 1987 tops for like $10 a piece. It might have been $7.50 a piece or $10 a piece, like 40 boxes. And now those boxes are I'm, 50, 60 bucks a piece, something crazy like that. All right, I think we're doing autograph. And there it is. It's a Josh Fleming from the Tampa Bay Rays, numbered out of 25. That one is um, for the Rays, and that's for Jack. Jack Holland with the hit. Ike says he'd like to do something to Nashville. That would be pretty cool. Um, for the, I don't know if we got Ike on camera. Lot. Was it two Nationals ago? Ike was at the uh, booth. That we were breaking for eBay. Ike was there helping me out, doing some... <laughs> I think you were doing some trash duty for me, helping me whisk away some of the wrappers. And we featured his paintings on uh, on that video. All right, next box up. Josh Fleming was the auto out of that. I guess they they see how they put a Harvey Coon in there, a nice old timer, and um, then they balance it out with a Josh Fleming. Jeff says, "I remember your story about all the Mike Trout PSA ten rookie cards they had at the National for a thousand each. They've only gone up three hundred percent since then. What was that? Uh, what year was that? That was I think that was twenty nineteen." Um, and actually, I think they were, I, I saw some for like 900 bucks. Should have bought every single one of them. But who could have known that there was going to be a, just a gigantic price boom? You never know. Is this all, some, I was wondering today when I was looking at the cryptocurrency market, that like, um, Bitcoin, which was previously at a high not too long ago of $64,000 per coin, has now dropped. Today it dropped to 30000 So that's a very huge drop over the course of just a little bit. The crypto markets got wiped out today. I wonder if something like that would happen with baseball cards. Like if people just say, you know what, I'm done buying this. And then you have this huge inventory out there. No one's buying it. And then everyone's just going to lower their prices. Do you think there might be a crash coming? A lot of people wonder that in the card industry. Some people might even be rooting for it because they'll be able to get cards again. And then, of course, those people that have been, you know, buying and investing in cards are really hoping that doesn't happen. There's Ian Anderson. That is going to be a nice autograph for the Braves. Hey, Timmy, how's it going? Timmy, tea time's in the house. Ian Anderson, dual relic auto for the Braves. The Braves are owned by Jack Holland. So Jack with a second hit. Scenic says they say crypto has been wiped out by $350 billion. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a crypto investor, but I've been thinking over the past, I don't know, week or so of getting involved in it. There's a Ryan Mountcastle. That's a nice one. Artist proof. It's going to be numbered out of 49. Dylan Carlson. This is a team break. A mess of things. It's a random team break. So we just randomed it up. There's a Bobby Dalbeck rookie card. Sheilas Joe Jackson. Next up, Scenic City Pickers says I was. Yeah, sorry, man. Harris says, can you show the teams I got? I just got home. Check out the uh, the description. Looking over real quickly, I see you have the Indians. I don't know if you had a second team or not, but Robbie says, have you hit a downtown in this product yet? yet? Yes, we did. The first box had a Joey Bart, the downtown card in there. So nice one right there for a Giants team. Here we go. The next 
stack up. Edward said, I forgot. I've got a chance at a Griffey jersey. That would be pretty nice. Hopefully, we can find a Griffey. We find a Ryan Weathers right now. That's going to be a dual jersey. Kevin says, the Cards are playing the Buccos tonight. That's, uh, I saw that Nolan Arenado, I think, had an RBI. I got a notification about that. I have no idea what the score is right now, though. Padres are owned by Brandon Mayo. Gets that one. Pirates not doing so well recently. And um, you know what I just noticed today was that you just brought up? Today is an anniversary for me. Alex Kirilov is a nice one right there, Plum. It's May 19th. I'm pretty sure. I don't know why it sticks into my head, but I feel like May 19th was the last time I was at a Pirates game two years ago, Bobby Dahlbeck. So it's exactly two years today that I, since I've been to a live Pirates game, which is pretty crazy because that was basically my home for... Uh, virtually every game from between 2007 and 2000 and May 19, 2019. I could still walk in there and tell you where any seat in the fleet could say, where's section 133, row B, seat 3? I could lead you to it in two seconds. I know that place like the back of my hand. All right, here we go. Next one up. How's my leg? It just has like a seven inch scar on it. It's fine though. It just busted my shin wide open. And that's the thing says a lot of people probably think you died. I don't think so. Although one of our one of my buddies actually did die. Very, very sad. I didn't get to see him one last time. Although it was he, he died unexpectedly. The only people that would probably know him as people that have been around this channel since I used to, I used to kind of um, video the uh, baseball adventures. He was the uh, elderly African-American man with glasses. He was always uh, working on balls with his ball retriever. You may remember him. His name was Jim. He passed away this offseason. Just found out about it a couple weeks ago. There's Casey Mize, a second Casey Mize. So Tiger's up to four hits, and Sean is just sitting there just uh, rubbing his hands together, looking probably really, really happy right now. Casey Mize, second autograph. This is a very heavily uh, saturated Tiger's case right now. Edward says, Jabs, I got five blasts of this and got four hits. One was Pittsburgh auto of Jared Oliva. I've heard that name. I don't know too much about him. If we have Austin Farmer in the house, he would let you know. And actually, I don't think it's pronounced Oliva either. I think it's Oliva. I'm pretty sure we, he, when, when I heard the name, or when I heard it on the radio, they said it really weird, like Oliva. I was like, what? That, that's not what, how I've said it before. Jason Van Thornout says, can you let me know if I'm publicly subscribed? Thank you for the super chat. Um, sure, let me go ahead and go over to my YouTube analytics page and figure that out for you real quick. I can only tell if you're publicly subscribed, though, if you've left a comment recently. So I'm just going to type in your name and we'll see what comes up. Jason, we get any, we'll probably have a few Jasons. We've got a whole bunch of Jasons within the last few days. I'm going to try your last name because it's um, unique. Jason Van, all one word. Thor Nout. And uh, yeah, you were publicly subscribed. You did leave one comment and you've been publicly subscribed for a year. So you're good to go for the 95K giveaway. Whenever that is, probably sometime in June or July. I'm not sure. All right, here we go. Next side of the box. Let's see what we can do in this one. Thank you very much for the super chat, Jason. The Brady Singer, he's been doing pretty good this year. All right, let's flip these over. Mickey Moniak, see the upside down hit coming up. It is going to be a Nick Niedert for the Marlins. Marlins are owned by Philip Costel. So, Philip, congratulations on your Nick Niedert. And Julian says, love your content and monthly product you give uh, you give us. Keep it coming. Are you going to be opening any of Bowman Sterling this year? 
I will be doing Bowman Sterling. That uh, is planned for next Wednesday, probably around like 8.30 to 9 p.m. I'm not sure exactly how many cases I'll have. Got to see what I can find. But, um, yeah, we'll be doing Bowman Sterling when it comes out next week. Looks like um, Big League got pushed back to, like, July 9th. I was expecting that to come out at the end of May, but that is not out. Kevin says, I have the May subscription box. Depends on what tier you're on. I'll tell you that uh, I've got pretty much everything except for maybe about 10 left for the 51s. Everything else is already out. Um, I sent the remainder of the 51s and the $40 ones today. I have not yet sent out the $100 and $300 ones yet. Those are ones that are still in the wings, and I plan to have those out by this weekend. In fact, I'll probably, after this break, if there's time before bedtime, I'll probably go and start working on a few more of those. All right, let's see what we've got in here. Edward says, people around here are not into baseball cards. I went to my Walmart and picked up 20 Bowman value packs. So, Edward, you must be at a Walmart that just throws them out on the shelf and doesn't make you do one at a time. Unfortunately, all the Walmarts in my area now, just they make you stand in line at customer service, which sometimes can be up to like 10, 15 minutes just for one pack or box. I mean, it's it's more fair that way, but it's just kind of, it's definitely more inconvenient. Let's see what we've got. There's a Ryan Mount Castle. It's going to be a gray framed. What's the blaster box in the $100 one this month? Well, it was supposed to be Gypsy Queen. We got that got pushed back till like July, so it's going to be Heritage once again. We've got a Shane McClanahan for the Rays fans out there. Our second Rays hit. Rays are owned by Jack Holland. He's up to three. I feel like I need like a little scoreboard to see who gets the most hits. Right now, it's definitely Sean Christensen, but uh, Jack's catching up. There's a Xander Bogarts out of 99. Nice one right there. Got a Bo Bichette. I think he's up to like nine home runs now, having a pretty solid year, as expected. Spacer. And that will do it for this box. Next box up, we're about, uh, what are we in here? Seven boxes in out of 24. Here's box number eight. So this is about the one third um, mile marker. Third of the way done. Probably be here about an hour and a half tonight. Braves has been finding fat packs of Diamond Kings at Big Lots, five bucks a piece. That's a pretty good deal. Is it a... What? Did I totally... I think I skipped the second half of the box. Whoops. Let's do that right now. Is that 2021 Diamond Kings? Some people love Diamond Kings. Some people don't. Some people love Panini and some people do not. What's my best personal collection collection card? Probably the Cy Young 1909. Here we go through the next stack. Something's coming up. It's going to be a Bobby Dalbeck, and that's going to be a Bobby Dalbeck autograph. That one would have... I don't know how much his cards have gone down over the past month or two, but, man, coming out of spring training, that was probably the number two best uh, rookie card. He hasn't gotten off to a great start. Weekend Rip says, hey, Eric, my son Lucas and I started a channel since we open packs every weekend. Our $51 Patreon box will be featured soon. Weekend Rips, thank you very much. You should have that within the next day or two. I shipped half of them yesterday and then the other half of them today. <coughs> so hopefully you get something good. Somebody left me a message and said um, they pulled like uh, a Hank Aaron, Ronald Acuna Jr., John Smoltz, and Chipper Jones, like quad relic. Something like that, Quad Relic Auto. Like, it looks at the odds. He sent me the odds. It was like uh, one out of like 161,000 or some crazy number like that. But um, sent me that message. You pulled that out of the, the $51. I think it was 51. 
something, something heritage that I sent him in the, the May, um, the May Patreon box. So if you're watching right now, let us know exactly what that card was. I remember that that was, those are the players on there, but just remember those players and really, really tough odds. Brave said he pulled an awesome quad relic auto of Reggie Jackson out of four. That's pretty awesome. What packs are on the $51 tier? Um, it differs. Uh, I think this month I did, what did I do? It was, it was probably, was it, was it a heritage, a, an update from 2020? Definitely a 2020 series two pack looking for Luis Robert. Kevin Moley says, just wanted to thank you again for reviewing nuts and jacks mystery pack series one, almost sold out series two modern packs will be hitting eBay in a couple weeks. Look out for them for mystery box Monday. Kevin, thank you very much, man. Really appreciate that. So another round of uh, those mystery packs coming up series two. If you send them our way, we'll take a look at them on Monday and see what we can find. I always like doing those mystery products. Josh Fleming, that is out of 50. Josh Fleming, another Tampa Bay Ray. Lisa's got an address issue. I will have to look into that. I don't know what happened. Sometimes I have an issue with stamps, like I'll type your name in and then I'll type the address in and for whatever reason, it'll send it to your old address, like it remembers your address and then it's really annoying, but I, I, know, I catch stamps doing that all the time. So I'm going to have to delete your name completely out of my stamps address book and re-add it. So, yeah, if you recently moved and you changed your address uh, with the post office, they will forward your mail for upwards of a year. Let's see what we can find now in our next one. Did you move the 70K giveaway to private? No, I don't, that shouldn't be private. Brave says, love getting young kids Diamond Kings because it crosses decades and teaches baseball history. Yeah, definitely. You got a lot of older players in there like Satchel Page. And you get the younger guys as well, like Will Crow. A lot of people sitting out there have no idea who Will Crow is. He was traded from the Nationals as part of the uh, Josh Bell trade. By the way, Chris Bubich. I believe it's pronounced Bubich with an itch on the end and not ick like I was previously saying. Every time I've heard this guy's name pronounced on the MLB Network Radio, it's been Chris Bubich. And he's been really, really good this year. So that might be a rookie card to keep your eye on. Got a Buster Posey. It's a Mount Castle. He's been doing nothing this year, really. A little bit here and there, but overall underperforming. Roger Clemens autograph. How about this one? Signature portrait. Roger Clemens, seven-time Cy Young Award winner. Now, the only question is, what team is he on? Is he on the Astros, Blue Jays, Yankees, Red Sox? Let's see if it's going to tell us. It's on the Yankees. So this one goes to our Yankee owner, which is Daniel Martinez, which is one of our nicest hits so far. Roger Clemens' signature portraits. That is a great card right there. Uh, for, and it's, wow, there's only seven of them around. Seven out of seven. So you're, this, you're looking at a couple hundred bucks here at least. I would imagine with that low, low print run of only seven, Iceland said, did you get re-signed to FanDuel? That's a great question. As of right now, at this moment, no. But um, they did say that they would like to have me back. We're just working on, got to work out the, a new contract. So, Roger Clemens. Out of seven, really low number right there. That's probably going to be the hit of the case. A lot of people hate Roger Clemens. Sumpton says, because uh, with a redemption for a used needle, of course, Roger Clemens was allegedly a juicer and had Brian McNamee, his trainer, inject him with steroids, I guess. So the story goes. At least that's what Brian McNamee said. All right, here we go. Next box up. That Clemens surprised me. I wasn't expecting to see that there. 
Zach says, can anyone tell me if a Royals hit? I don't think we have any Royals hits, but you do have a lot of Chris Bubich rookie cards, which are going to be a good one. Here we go into our next box. All right, there's definitely some spacers in here. There's Joey Bart. Let's see what we can find here. First hit, here it comes. It's a Sixto Sanchez. Sixto Sanchez out of 50. That's the auto. So I'm, you know, not a bad name, but not a huge name. I'm expecting a pretty nice relic coming up in that second stack. It seems like they divide these up. One stack has the autograph, one has one stack has the relic. And it looks like I'm wrong. It's Dane Dunning. Wrong on both counts. Not a uh, fabulous relic and not a fabulous, or not on the right side. It's out of 99, Dane Dunning. So I guess they consider Sixto Sanchez to be a marquee rookie. We'll finish off this. Maybe we'll get a second auto. Sometimes that happens. Something says, loved Roger Clemens, Texas Longhorn alumni, but he and Rafael Palmero broke his heart. And Bray Bulwark pulled a Bichette Senior rookie card from a $5 Fairfield box today. Dante Bichette, 1989. That's a nice one. Yeah, Reds fans, is that Jazz Chisholm's picture in Six Days Auto? What's up with that? I have no idea. Definitely a weird choice for a picture. What's the biggest hit ever? Probably the Vladdy Superfractor rookie card. Here we go with the next round. This is probably all going to be base cards. Ian Anderson framed. You never know, though. This is a nice one right there. Alex Kirilov. So the Twins are going to be stockpiling a bunch of Kirilov rookie cards, which is nice. Kirilov will have a rookie card in Series 2. So some of the teams that... If you do a team break... There's Jazz Chisholm right there. If you do a team break... Uh, for Series 2, the Twins are going to be up there in price along with the Pirates and the White Sox because they're, they're going to be headlined by Key Brian Hayes and Alex Kirilov and um, Yermin Mercedes, who's in the news. Yeah, I don't know why Sixto Sanchez is, has a bat in that. That's kind of a weird one. Let's, let's examine that one again. Sixto Sanchez, I have no idea. I don't. That's not Sixto Sanchez, is it? Definitely, maybe that's, uh, what's his name, Jesus Sanchez, that middling prospect. They just screwed it up. Series 2 won't have uh, Jared Kelnick, I don't think, Matt. I think he's going to be an update. He just appeared too late. Kyle says that's not Sixto. Yeah, I'm thinking that's Jesus Sanchez. Don't, they, don't you guys have a Jesus Sanchez and they just mixed up their Sanchez's? I think that's what may have happened. Uh, Nachum, I did not get your email. Ryan says he found packs at Cracker Barrel. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, John Sixto was acquired for JT Real Muto from the Phillies. So maybe we have an uncorrected error card. I have already a mess of things. I actually bought two of their frames like back in October. I was thinking about making a video about it, but the cards in there all were pretty awful. They're like junk wax cards, but I did pick up a couple of those frames. And I was like, oh, this is like, I don't know. It's like a two-minute video. I was trying to think of something I could do with those frames. But they're sitting uh, in my dining room. Hey, look who it is, guys. It's Jesus Sanchez. So uh, I, I called it. It's Jesus Sanchez. The mystery of the Sanchez's has been solved. You can see it's the exact same picture. So we've got an error card. That's not Sixto Sanchez. That's Jesus Sanchez. Now let's take a look at the autos. So the autos are definitely different. I'm guessing this is Sixto's actual signature. And um, this is Jesus Sanchez. Very, very weird. So uh, who's got the Marlins? You've got a pretty interesting uh, thing going on here. Sixto and Jesus Sanchez, error card and correct card. <laughs> and back-to-back -back boxes nonetheless. So that solves that mystery. Let's take a look at the rest of the box. Joe DiMaggio, Frame Show, Otani. 
But he says, I wish all I wish all gas stations sold baseball cards. At least we wouldn't have a we'd have a better chance to get some. Or Walmart does not limit what you buy, so people are coming from the big cities to buy them all. I remember Lisa, you were telling me a few months ago, probably in the fall, that you lived in a nice little small town where you could get cards whenever you wanted. And now it looks like the big city dealers are coming and raiding everywhere. I was actually thinking about doing a video, speaking of small towns, going to every single Walmart or Target in like Ohio or West Virginia or Maryland or I probably wouldn't do Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a little too big. Ohio is pretty big too, but going to every single Target and Walmart, maybe just taking like a weekend and seeing what I can find. But I bet you I'd find nothing and it would be just be a waste of a weekend. I've been thinking about doing that video for a while, but I just never got around to it. And now it's probably too late, especially when you see... Uh, you know, videos all over the place of people lining up at 5 a.m. just around the around the store. Yeah, Target is done selling. Probably some Targets are still selling, but I think look at this, Mariana Rivera game used jersey. That is a sweet card right there. I'm just thinking it says they had one job. Somebody is fired. Yeah, who's the uh, who's the editor of uh, putting these cards together? Very nice, Marion Rivera, game used jersey with a piece of the pinstripe right there. Hall of Famer Marion Rivera, one of my favorite, honestly, probably my favorite player from the late '90s and 2000s. I I loved him more than anyone from that time period, more than Derek Jeter. Andy Van Slyke for me was, um, I don't know, it would probably come close to Barry Bonds. Come to think of it, I loved watching Barry Bonds from that time as well. Loved Cal Ripken in the early 90s. Jason Mayberry says, I updated my shipping info for my 2021 Archives Saturday Showdown win. Jason, thank you very much. 2021 Archives? Um, hasn't that already been shipped out? I think I feel like that was a couple months ago, wasn't it? There is a Dylan Carlson. Got a spacer. I have a bunch more spacers. So, Jason, thank you very, very much for the support. And um, you might want to send me an email so we can figure that, that out. There's a Key Brian Hayes. Artist Proof numbered card. Let's see what else we can find in our next box. Get these all put away for now. A big stack of cards. Don't like to get the stacks too tall. I don't want them to fall over. We haven't found any pirates hits yet, so Joe Himpleman says he wants a pirate. I'll tell you what, that Key Brian Hayes uh, artist proof rookie is going to be worth more than a lot of the relics or autos that we find tonight, unless, you know, they're really, really good ones. That's probably worth it. I don't, I don't know. It's always tougher for me to figure out panini prices but I don't, I don't know 40 bucks on that card hey bitg says send an email i know they get buried might try again bitg thank you very much man really appreciate that very very nice super chat um been wanting to go down to bitg's card store in west virginia for a while now um, i will definitely check that one out but yeah th they do get buried as you know i have a lot of unread emails um, just I get tons of emails on a daily basis from all sorts of different places. I've got 59,007. Let's see here. I see Natchum just sent me an email at 10.03. Ike sent me one at 9.25. I'm going to have to go back and find BITG. Did you send it to my Yahoo account? Because I don't see it from today. Is it, did you send it to the Eric J underscore 100 one? So I'm interested to read, especially if it's about your card store. Here's Key Brian Hayes again. So another Pirates hit. It's the Plum Border. Tom, um, wasn't Tops Fire Target exclusive? Asked some Tim. Yep, it was for Target only. There's Vladimir Guerrero Sr., the Vladdy Daddy, as they call him. And who's that? Mount Castle. Here comes another hit. Oh, look out, guys. It's a Hall of Famer coming up. Didn't we just have Mario Rivera from this? Maybe from he was from the last box. 
We have another Hall of Fame hit coming our way. You can see the Hall of Fame. All right, BITG, I will have to take a look at that and find out what it is. Now let's take a look at our Hall of Famer. It is good. It's a nice, thick card, and it is going to be a Harold Baines out of 25. Some people are probably like, eh, Harold Baines. He's the least Hall of Famey of the Hall of Famers, but uh, definitely had a great career, so nice one right there for the White Sox. White Sox are owned by... Derek Cornelson, so congratulations on the Hall of Famer right there. And a super chat from Mess of Things says, I'm kind of hoping that the tribulations the industry is going through will lead to a revitalization of the trading aspect. Start trading those cards. That's a great idea. I think one of the things kind of um, hindering trading is people just not trusting each other. Like, for example, like, Today, a lot of the people that you know that like cards are probably living in a different city or state than you that you've met through different channels or um, apps, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. So you really have to know them well. Some just random guy said, hey, you want to trade for, uh, I got a 52 man mantle, I'll trade you for your Cy Young card. Like, I don't know how confident I'd feel sending out the Cy Young before I had the mantle in my hand and on the other side probably vice versa Adrenalized, Adrenalized says hey Eric I opened a box of 05 Series 2 first edition and managed to pull a Verlander draft card pretty stoked also looking forward to my $51 tier packs thank you very much Adrenalized I hope you guys will check their channel out hope you get some good stuff in the $51 package and I uh, really appreciate your support man hope you guys will all go over there and Give him a follow. Tariq Scooball is the next hit, and guess what? It's going to the Tigers. It's an autograph, our fifth Tigers hit. King Dom, thanks for signing up. Ryan Christensen is taking this one to the house tonight with five hits already, and uh, we're not even at the halfway point yet. This is box number 11 of 24, so we're almost at the halfway point. But to go back to what I was thinking about with the trading that a mess of things brought up, I think that it would be cool if your local card stores would facilitate like a, a trading Tuesday or something like that, like that or flipping Friday. I don't know. Call it something and set like a time block where like um, maybe like a maybe it could be after they close from like eight to ten or whatever, where a bunch of people just go in and uh, they just bring their stuff and they look for trades and then maybe they can talk about what they have and the next week they can go back and work it out. I think that would be kind of a, a cool thing. Plus you'd bring in a bunch of foot traffic into your card store. Jason says, shows return to ya. Just emailed you. Get back when you can. All right, Jason, I will have to look into the hopper and see where that's at. If it was returned recently, I haven't checked my mail since Monday. So... Send me an email with the tracking number. I'll, I'll see exactly when it came back, and I'll try to figure out where that package went to. And a mess of things says, trades will be part of my new series, Minute Mail. That's a cool idea, man. Thank you very much for the super chat. Definitely, that's a lost art of the, the uh, whole hobby is trading. I mean, they, all, they are called trading cards. So thank you very much, Jason, for the support. And a mess of things as well. Mikey says, have you seen the Doctors Baseball Collection? Yeah, they think it's going to get $20 million for the collection. That ba What's that Babe Ruth? Is it like a PSA like 8 or 9? Isn't it like a... Is it a 33 Gaudi? It's the nicest Babe Ruth card you'll ever see. But yeah, that uh, doctor who passed away had all these great cards, and I think they said that his collection could fetch $20 million. Did I see Kevin Pillar get nailed in the face? Nope. I heard all about it, but I, I was not watching that. I don't like watching gruesome stuff like that. That would that kind of stuff just messes with my head. So, yeah, I heard that his nose got completely busted off, basically. He, I guess he had plastic surgery to fix it, but there's just blood all over the place, and uh, even just hearing about it made me very, very uncomfortable. There's a nice Griffey right there. Hopefully he's going to be okay. Chris Sale... 
Chris Sale Jersey Kings card. We always joke whenever we find a Chris Sale that uh, he probably like personally cut it up himself or they salvaged it from the locker room because Chris Sale, a couple years ago, back when he was with the White Sox, didn't like to throw back unis. So while the team was taking batting practice, he snuck into the dugout and uh, took like big garden shears or something and cut up all the jerseys. BITG says, send a new email, easy to find. I got a Walter Johnson T206 on trade the other day, sent it to PSA. That is that is crazy stuff. That's one of the good things about having a card store. And Bufus says, hey, Eric, keep up the great work. Go Lakers and Dodgers. Bufus, thanks, man. Really appreciate that. You guys will check his channel out and give him some support. Dodgers haven't been doing so great this year. I was actually thinking about doing a futures bet on them on FanDuel. And uh, I was like, there's no way the Dodgers aren't winning this division. Now they're like a second or third place team battling it out with the likes of the Giants and the Padres. I think they might be. Are they a third place team right now? I, I don't know. Somewhere in there. Lisa says, how come I can't send a super chat? Um, it might be the device. Sometimes you need to switch a device to get it to go through. But Lisa, thank you very much for trying. We've got Esteban Floreal. That's another Yankees hitter, at least our third one of the day. That one's going to Daniel Martinez as well. We've got a spacer right there. And this should be all um, base cards. But going back to the BITG baseball card store, one of the huge um, benefits of having a card store, at least from what I've heard around here, is you have people coming into your store all the time with their collections or their cards, and they're just wanting to, to sell them or see what they're worth. So you probably see a bunch of good stuff coming through there. And you have a you got first dibs basically on all these collections. Sometimes you could probably get some pretty good stuff. I know that um, in Uniontown they got a Pittsburgh Stellar collectible card store, and he says that he's always getting people bringing in their stuff. I mean, I've even been in there. I've been in there maybe like four times, and I think half the times that I've been in there, people brought by binders or whatever and said, "Hey, how much can I get for this?" Radio says, seems like a long time since you've done a live stream. How you doing? It's It has been a little while, huh? Um, doing pretty well. I think the what was the last one we even did? It was on Saturday, but it was a short one. We did a, a Bowman Saturday showdown. It was only like, probably like 40 minutes. And Adrenalize is not going to lie. The Diamond Kings pack that came with the Jabs Family Box trolled me good. It had a thick spacer in it. And I was convinced I had something good. Sorry about that, man. I wish it had something good in it, but yeah, some of these packs have thick spacers in there. Mick says, am I still timed out? You can't see me, not sure what I did. I, I didn't time you out. Sometimes you may have accidentally got picked off and the moderator is trying to time somebody else out and somebody else chats at the exactly wrong moment and bumps you up into the spot they're clicking. I think I've done that before. All right, this is officially the second inner case. We might have another shot at a downtown insert right now. This is box number 13 of the night. Hey, Jack, how's it going? Good to see you. All right, let's flip through these and see what we can find. Have found a few Hall of Famers tonight, and one would be Hall of Famer, if not for all steroid stuff, with the Roger Clemens autograph. Joe's looking on Cardboard Connection to see what A's you could get. Canseco or Henderson would be pretty cool. We'll see. There's a Henderson, so we get that one. Yeah, the Legacy Lithographs, they do have autographs on some of these. But that one obviously doesn't have it. And there's an Alejandro Kirk, big guy right there. Lisa says, 400 folks here, 114 likes. Let's hit that like button, everybody. Thank you, Lisa, for bringing that up. Look at this, street art. I don't think I've ever seen this card before. It's some sort of insert that might be kind of rare. There's the back of it, a street art. Bo Bichette to the Blue Jays. I don't know if anyone could look that one up. I'm going to top with that one because I, I would not be surprised if that's worth 50 bucks. Radio says maybe they should rename the 90s steroid era the junk wax era. <laughs> yep, um, definitely. Um, they call it junk wax because the cards were worthless. Absolutely worth nothing for the longest time. And then, of course, the 2020 card boom hit. Now, a case of 1990 Donruss. I put in a bid yesterday for, I think, $375. 
for a case of 20 bucks of 90 Donruss. Boxes that I used to be able to buy for four or five bucks three years ago. And they turned my bid down. That's how much it has boomed. It's like, I just need to find, get some more boxes here. The wax boxes, tough to come by, almost impossible to find. If you can get them for under 20 bucks, you've uh, anything under 20 bucks that's old. Now that's a score. That's right, radio. Here we go with this next stack. We've got Alec Baum. That's a nice one right there for the Phillies. So an Alec Baum autograph relic card. That one is going to go to Brent McDaniel. I think that's his second hit. Alec Baum has not been off to a great start whatsoever this year. But who knows? He might rebound and that card will start heading back up. I think that's it for this box in terms of hits. Maybe not. I was wrong. There's a Dalton Jeffries from the Oakland A's. Brand says, what's the old vintage box? Um, for this month, I I am not sure yet. It's probably some people are going to be this, and some people are going to get that. There's Dalton Jeffries from the Oakland Athletics. Dylan Carlson. And Christian Pache. Next box up. One of the Street Art Bo Bichette sold for 200 bucks. How about that? Blue Jays owned by... Who got the Blue Jays? Lloyd Gill. Somebody says that the Street Art Bo Bichette is worth $200. That's pretty crazy stuff right there. Congratulations on that. That hit alone was well worth it. All right, next box up. Let's see what we can find. Some Tim says, I got a 2005 Bob Feller certified auto for $8. It's sad. People don't know Bob Feller. Yeah, Hall of Famer Bob Feller. The Cleveland Indians. Man, he could really run it up there. And he's also a huge war hero, too. Like, gave up years of his career to go and fight for our country. We've got a... Oh, look at this. Ronald Acuna Jr. Is it going to be an auto? It's not. It's a relic out of 99. Still pretty cool. Ronald Acuna Jr. And Kluber with a no-no going into the ninth. Corey Kluber working on a no-no. That's That would be the sixth no-hitter this year already, I think. And it's only mid-May. That's crazy. Everyone's throwing no-hitters. Jared Oliva. I forget how you pronounce his name. Something weird like that. You would think it's Oliva. Oliva, some, I think. The Baum. Alec Baum just hit a walk-off. Really? That's pretty awesome. Or Acuna just hit a walk-off homer. That's his 13th of the year, huh? Trying to keep up with Otani. Keep those 2018 prices high. How about Corey Kluber? That's that's a pretty nice little renaissance for him. He wasn't the same pitcher the last two years. I think uh, it was in Miami early 2019. Broke his arm with a comebacker and has not been the same clue bot since then. Matt says the record is seven no hitters in one season. We're already going to be at six if Kluber gets it, and it's only mid May. Batting average is lower than ever. Remember back when uh, 300 was like, at least for me, I always considered 300 to be like the line for like if you're above 300, you're good. And I always considered like above 330 to be great when I was a kid. Now it's like if you're hitting above 260, you're good. And if you're hitting above 280, you're great or whatever. 290, you're great. All the averages are going down, down, down. Someone just asked a question there. I saw it scroll on by. What are my thoughts about Yermin Mercedes and all that drama going on in Chicago? We've got a Dean Kramer. If you, it's a autograph out of 99. J&M, how's it going, man? Thanks for tuning in. If you don't know the story, I'll tell you a little bit about what happened. It was a blowout game. It was the White Sox against the Twins the other day. And the Twins, to save their bullpen arms in a blowout game, they decided to put a good old Tortuga out there. Williams asked Judea on the mound. There was a 3-0 count. 
on your mean Mercedes, and uh, your mean Mercedes was given the take sign, which means don't swing. It's 3-0. The old, I don't want to call them the old farts in the game, but um, the old farts in the game don't like batters swinging on 3-0. They think it's disrespectful, and you know who the manager of the White Sox is. It's Tony La Russa, and uh, he's pretty old school, so... He gave the take sign, and Yermin Mercedes, instead of taking the pitch, he uh, he let a big old hack fly and took a huge jumbo hack at the ball and hit a home run into left center field off of Astudio. And um, so he blew blew right through the, the take sign, and Tony LaRusse was not happy about it. He was really mad after the game. He was... He basically called out your mean Mercedes and says, that's not the way we play baseball around here. And that he even sent over an apology to the twins for being disrespectful. And the thing of thing that kind of adds some more drama about it, all of the players in the clubhouse, like Lance Lynn and Tim Anderson, all those guys, they all have your mean Mercedes is back on this. So La Russa not getting much respect from the White Sox clubhouse. And um, I don't know. Bruce is not having a very good season. His manager, he's already blown. If you're a White Sox fan, you know this. LaRusa has blown like three games for you already because one of the games he blew because he didn't know the 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 extra inning rule and had um, had like a pitcher running or something like that. He totally screwed it up with the run that was placed on second base. He thought he was going to have a pitcher running, so he made a dumb bonehead move. It seems to not really know how to manage a bullpen or anymore. It's like leaves pitchers in too long, and he's probably cost you at least three wins right now. Here's the here's one other thing. The guy on the mound is a pitcher, so it's already like like how are you supposed to respect that when the guy on the mound is thrown forty six miles an hour? Like I, I think it was literally like 45, 46 miles an hour. It's already a joke as it is. He's just out there just trying to get you to hit the ball and hopefully at somebody. So I'm on your mean Mercedes' side when it comes to this issue. I was also on Fernando Tatis Jr.'s side when he hit a, he hit a grand slam on 3-0 and and got uh, chastised over that. You might remember that. Jay Weiderman says, you you average, or you mentioned batting average just being low. What are your thoughts on moving the mound back? I had heard it was going on in the minors. Yeah, I forget what, what level they're doing at. It might be low A or short season minor league, but they're going to move the mound back 61 feet, 6 inches, and see what that does. I don't really like anything that messes with the game. Like, that's a pretty big change. I, I mean... I, I don't know. I'm kind of traditional in that sense. Like, I, I would not like a time clock. Like, if there's like a... I, I guess there is pitch clocks, but uh, I don't like any, any of that stuff. I think the game should just be played the way it's always been played. We've got Joey Bart out of 25. So I don't know if that would screw everything up or not. It's a lot of it has to do with the way that the players approach the game. Like now, it's everybody wants to hit a home run. Nobody ever wants to uh, go with the pitch and try to slap the ball to right field and get a single. They just want to. They're just swinging for the fences all the time. So it's pretty much either hit a home run, strike out, or get a walk. It's becoming like a three true outcome game, which kind of stinks. Kevin says they did lower the mound because of Bob Gibson. Yeah, 1968, Bob Gibson had a 112 earned run average and just dominated everybody. And they're like, uh-oh, we better do something here. So they lowered the mound a little bit. Lisa says, Miggy's batting 184 and climbing. Yeah, he's been getting a hit or two every single day. I've been watching him. I remember that he was hitting 098 about a week and a half ago. And when I saw that, I was like, all right, I'm on the Miggy watch. I got to see if he can get this up. So a lot of people are calling for uh, Miggy to, or at least saying he's washed up. Cabrera still has this season, next season, and then the season after that at $30 million per year. So awful contract. Probably the worst contract in all of baseball right now is that Miguel Cabrera contract. 
The Chris Davis one's pretty bad, but he'll be coming off the books. I can't, maybe in two years, I can't remember. And Braves, is this Pujols' last year? Um, that's a good question. He hasn't said anything about it, but I bet you it is. I mean, unless he's happy being like a, a role player slash part-time player just playing like uh, a day or two a week. I think, I don't know, I think he'll probably think about it and hang it up. There he is, our Pujols. Hopefully he makes the call right around the All-Star break so he can have a farewell tour so that they give him a warm welcome in each stadium, have a little ceremony. Matt says, I heard Pujols' wife post on Instagram before this season that it was his last. That would make sense. Yeah, he just doesn't have it anymore. He hasn't had it for a few years. Really? Oh, look at this. We have a Hall of Famer coming up. Very, very nice. Let's see who it is. We've had a few Hall of Famers tonight, and this one is going to be a... Wait for it. Baltimore? Is that going to be Earl Weaver? It is Earl Weaver. So Earl Weaver, former legendary manager of the Baltimore Orioles, is the next hit. So that goes to our Orioles owner, which is Patrick. Congratulations on the Earl Weaver. And we've got one more stack of cards. So it'll probably be a crappy autograph because it just gave you a Hall of Famer. Martin says, Harvey Haddix of the Buccos pitched 12 inning perfect game but lost in the 13th. Yeah, how about that? Wouldn't that be awful? Like, you couldn't get one run for him. We got Earl Weaver, Harold Baines. We had a Roger Clemens auto. We had a Marian Rivera game used. How many packs come into Master Boxes, Derek? Well, you're thinking of a Master Case. A Master Case has. 24 total boxes. Inside the master case, there's two mini cases of 12 boxes per case, and those all each have their own box. Kind of like almost a little nesting doll type deal with a case inside a case, two cases inside a big case. Let's see what we can find in this one. Got a Will Crow silver frame. Randy Rosarena not really doing too much this year, so I'm sure a lot of people that spent big money on his autos are a little worried. Hitting about, what, 260 with three homers, something like that. We've got Braxton Garrett is the autograph. Braxton Garrett. Pujols is so close to 700, would love to see him stick around for it, says Kevin. Yeah, what's Pujols at? Like 670, something like that? I think he would need two more years to get there. Maybe if he can hit, like, 15 this year in limited playing time and then maybe get the other 15 next year. I don't know. All right, let's see. Next box. 260 is a good average. Yeah, nowadays it is. I think 260 actually isn't that great. I, that's That was always like a middling average when I was growing up. If you get 260, I'd be like, eh, you're, you're okay, but you're not that great. Randy Rosarani hit two dingers tonight. All right, so that's good. Maybe he'll start to get on a hot streak. He was uh, definitely had been cooled off for most of the spring. Born in the SCO says, we got a no-no for Corey Kluber. That's pretty awesome. The sixth no-hitter already the season, and it's only May 19th. Let's see. We've got a Ryan Sandberg plum frame. Curl off rookie card in there. Dylan Carlson, there's a Hank Greenberg. So Kluber, we're getting reports from people in the chat saying Kluber pitched a no-hitter, nine and incomplete game no-hitter with one walk. So missed, missed out on the perfect game. And we have a William Contreras dual relic uh, autograph right there. Nice one for the Braves. Braves are owned by Jack Holland. I think that's his fourth hit of the night. So Jack still still uh, rack up the hits. Congratulations on that, Jack. They get these cards put in their box.
The Yankees with the no-no. I wonder if Garrett Cole's going to throw a no-no for the Yankees this year. He's got crazy stuff. Slider says when Means to the no-hitter, he got screwed over on the perfect game. He didn't walk and he won the catcher. Screwed him by dropping the third strike. Yeah, that's awful. But still, it's a no-hitter, though. Of course, John Means supposedly was cheating during that no-hitter. I don't know if you've seen the video, but I guess he had a whole big patch of pine tar inside of his glove and kept going to it throughout the no-hitter. But, I mean, the other side of the coin is everybody uses pine tar or some kind of um, substance. I forget what the most popular one is. I, I guess Garrett Cole uses allegedly... Um, like boiled Coca-Cola with some resin and pine tar all mixed together. It's supposed to be like a really good um, subscription. AB says, I'm missing eight shipments from the Big Bat Box. Anyone know what's up? They won't return my emails. I don't know what's up with the Big Bat Box. Um, I also, um, I have, I'm supposed to be getting a box for Feb February, two for February, March, April, and May. So I, I, I'm missing seven out of those eight. I know that he had some health problems, and um, I also know from his Instagram stories that he makes like 400 a piece of the uh, the super high end uh, diamond big back boxes, and probably thousands of the lower end one a month. So he's just—I don't know if he's just way way behind or if his health is taking another turn. So hopefully Noah's doing okay. But um, I'm guessing that, that there's a lot of people in that same boat with you at the Big Bat Box waiting for um, their shipments from the last four months. There's Raul Racuna Jr., Dual Relic. That is a nice one. Uh, AB, they do have an Instagram page. You can check them out there and see if you can get in contact with them. Now, the boxes that they owe me, those are, those are free boxes. I didn't pay for them, so I don't really have... Um, I'm not, like, freaking out about them. But, uh, yeah, I could see where if you paid, like, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks per box, you'd be really uh, worried about that. So I'm just patiently waiting for those. Hopefully Noah is okay. And a lot of you guys probably know Noah, at least I think you do. Worked with him before. Here we go. Yeah, another Acuna Jr. The Braves have a, Jack's up to like six hits now, something crazy. All right, next one. We have six boxes left after this one. Then we'll be out of here. Bart says, I have an Acuna Jr. Quad Auto Relic and Diamond King. Is worth it at all? That's definitely worth something. Anytime you get an Acuna Auto, it's worth. going to be worth a couple hundred bucks, I would imagine. Adrenalize says, six no-hitters this year if you don't count Mad Bum. Of those six, they were only three against just three teams. Cleveland, Seattle, and Texas have all been no-hit twice. Yeah. That's crazy. You just had a no-hitter last night with, with Turnbull, and now another one today. Let's see who are the cards going to tonight. This is a random team break, so there is a link in the description of who gets what card. We're going to have to sort all these out over the next week. Hey, we got a downtown coming up. So the downtown case hit. Kevin says, you and I are alike. We started collecting at the same time and have a love for Junk Wax. My first pack was 1988 Tops, and I pulled a Will Clark. My father told me, at the time, keep that. It's going to be worth a lot. <laughs> Not so much. Kevin, thank you very much for the super chat. We did almost start at the same time. My first official pack was 1989 Tops. I pulled an Andy Van Slyke, who was... Everybody in the Pittsburgh area loved Andy Van Slyke so much. My friend went crazy about it. And uh, I was hooked ever since. And the downtown card is going to be Cody Bellinger. Nice one right there. A Belly Bombs downtown. Probably worth at least 50 bucks. We'll get that one top loaded up. Case hit. So, Kevin, thank you very much for the support. Probably had uh, very, very similar collections. If you go back and look at everything we had from our childhood, there's Clark Schmidt, autograph for the Yankees, another hit for the Yankees. Uh, I think that's at least the, what, third, probably fourth hit for Daniel. Chloe Antoinette's World says, hey, what's up, Chloe? Thank you very much for the super chat. Really appreciate that. Hope you're having a great evening tonight. On this Wednesday, Wednesday evening. So for those of you that asked a little bit ago, I think somebody asked, hey, what's coming up this week? And I said, oh, tomorrow we got Throwback Thursday, 2008 Tom, or 2008 
upper deck, and I never told you anything else. There's some more stuff that I have planned. I'll tell you that shortly. Radio says um, Dollar Tree has basketball. That's pretty cool. I hope they bring back Donruss. I like those a lot. Those dollar packs with the yellow parallels. Uh, we got another box. Sometimes I can't even see what I'm doing because the phone is in my face. <laughs> I missed it. Let's do this first and see what we can find. Coming up on the channel, we have Face Off Friday on Friday. It's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be mega boxes of 2021 20, Bowman versus 2020 Bowman Mega versus a 2019 Bowman Mega Box. So it's a Bowman Mega Box Face Off. Saturday, we have a Saturday showdown. And I think I have a couple spots left on Patreon. There's 36 total spots, but I think there might be like four spots left that are unpaid. Uh, that's going to be a Topps Tier 1 break, where we're breaking a whole case of Tier 1. And every spot is one card, and every card is numbered. So that one will be on Saturday. And Sunday, I'm not sure. I might do the retail run video. Um, if you watch the Mystery Box Monday, Michael Holland sent me a whole box filled with a bunch of stuff that he picked up. And uh, he asked for just a little under face value for it. So I sent him off his money today, and um, I sold the spot last night on Patreon. So we'll get that. Pro maybe that'll be Sunday. I'm not sure. And then maybe, who knows, maybe I'll go out somewhere this weekend and find some more cards and do a video. There's a Har Harry Heilman game use bat, and you guessed it. That's for the Tigers. Another Tigers hit. I think that's the sixth Tigers hit. Sean continues to just rack up the hits tonight with all the autographs and relics. Congrats on that one. Now we're into our next box. We've got five left after this one. And wouldn't you know, we still have yet to find any Sandy Koufax autographs or memorabilia cards whatsoever. I think I had five master cases of this product. This is my last one, which is... When it's all said and done, I'll, I'll have opened like 125 boxes about... I haven't found a single one of those. Hey, there's Dirk Remington. It says, good luck to all. Fun rip. Dirk, Dirk, thank you very much. Dirk's got a very popular video series called uh, Hunting Cards in the Wild, where he goes out to CVS and Walgreens and Target and Walmart and Big Lots and looks for cards. And pretty popular videos. You usually get a couple thousand views. So, Dirk, thank you very much. Hope you guys will check those out. Let's so now look into our next stack and see what we can find. There's Babe Ruth right there. Gray frame. If you're new to the hobby, you're probably like, wow, Babe Ruth, that's worth a ton of money, but it's just a base card. It's not worth anything more than like a Jesus Sanchez. We've got Esteban Floreal, another hit for the Yankees. That's a dual relic. Nice one right there. Kevin says, I collect Nelson Cruz. He helped the Cardinals win the World Series in 2011. Yeah, well... Weren't the uh, Rangers like a strike away? And then who was it? David Freeze hit a ball out to Nelson Cruz, and Nelson Cruz was so slow with literally no range that he couldn't get to it, and Freeze got like a, a run-scoring triple out of it. and Just a strike away, wasn't it, Rangers fans? Who's on the mound for you? Neftali Feliz, I think. Probably brings back terrible memories for all of you Rangers fans. Sorry for bringing that up. Um, I have the same kind of reaction with Sid Bream and the 1991 NLCS, or 92 NLCS, with uh, Barry Bonds' throw being offline. Price on the Tier 1 showdown? Um, I'm trying to think. I think it was uh, 6... I did a bundle deal, so it was like 60-something plus a bundle of flat rate cards. I'm trying to get rid of all the cards, so it's a priority flat rate box of cards from my garage along with the Saturday showdown spot all together. I think it might be 89 all together. Here's the next stack. Let's see what we've got. There's Ozzy Smith. Dylan Carlson. Very nice. We have a Dylan Carlson autograph. Dual relic auto. So the Cardinals coming up here. Chris Mills. Congratulations on that one nice dylan carlson rookie auto ty i do not sell any individual cards that would i just i would not have time at all
to do that. I, I can only keep up with my Patreon packages and breaks. Um, Tejas says, good day, Eric, from Australia. Good luck all from down under. That's pretty awesome. That's one country that I really want to go to. There's a few countries I want to go to, but Australia is definitely high on my list. There's Casey Mize. I really appreciate the support. <clears throat> one of these days I'll get down under. Check it out and... Uh, be pretty awesome for sure. See some Australian baseball and the ABL. I think that's what you call your Australian baseball league, isn't it? Thanks so much for the super chat. Let's go on now to the next box. Taya says, you have the ABL. I'm a big Bandits fan. Is Manny Ramirez still playing over there? Benjamin says, he's a citizen in Australia. That's pretty cool. Radio says, there's 24 boxes in the case. What box are you on? This would be, let's see here, 24, 23, 22, 21. This is box number 20. Micah says, what do you think about expansion teams for the MLB? I don't think they're going to expand anytime soon. They want to settle the score in Oakland and Tampa Bay first. We got an Evan White. That's going to be an Evan White autograph with a dual relic out of 99. Nice one right there for the Mariners. Mariners are owned by Raymond, so he gets a hit. Congrats, Raymond. But there's stadium situations in... Those two towns, and Sam Huff is the second hit for the Texas Rangers. Relic going to Scott Cochran. I think once those get settled, then maybe we'll look at expansion. In terms of who I'd like to see or where I'd like to see, I'm trying to think uh, selfishly. I'd like to see maybe like Rally get a team, Rally North Carolina, because they're kind of close to me. And uh, what's the next closest city without a team? Columbus, Ohio would be nice but it's not going to happen in those cities. It's probably going to be like the leading candidates for an expansion team are probably areas like um, Montreal would be a very, very logical choice because of the Expos. Las Vegas would get some support. We see the, um, Joe says Nashville and Portland. Matt says, the Rays should move to Tampa, not St. Pete. Forget the bridge traffic for a 7 p.m. game. And Slider says, did you know the A's were going to be at Birmingham, Alabama to, until the mayor denied it? I did not know that. Did you know the Blue Jays were supposed to play at PNC Park? They had a deal worked out to have all their games at PNC Park this year. And then our, our governor, I won't say anything else about him. I'll just call him a governor in quotation marks shot that one down. So they pivoted and now they're playing all their games in Dunedin. There's a Luis Robert out of 25. They're playing really well in Dunedin. I think they're like, uh, they got a pretty, pretty good winning record down there. There's Mickey Moniak. And that will do it for that box, we've got four boxes left now on this Wednesday evening. Get some of these wrappers out of the way. Mikey says, Jabs, eight, five cards of the Pirates, bottom of the seventh. All right, I think the Buckos are going to lose this one. Ashley says, How much would an 87 Topps Barry Bonds mid print be worth? Um, probably about a buck or two. I mean, nowadays with the card boom, that card's probably like a four dollar card. But I was, I would buy that card all the time when I'd see it for a dollar, back a couple years ago. And the misprint that I think you're talking about is the three in the card number three twenty. The number three and three hundred twenty is missing a little bit of its uh, three. It's not a, like a completed three. And some people are misleadingly calling that a misprint when it's really every single Bonds card is like that. 
Brady says, are the Pirates in dead last? They weren't that bad as you predicted. They are in last place in the Central, but it doesn't look like they're going to lose. Well, you know, it's, maybe they just started good, but I, I thought they were shooing for losing over 100 games versus Mount Castle. They're not the worst team. I think that goes to, what, the Rockies right now, but we'll see. They do have the number one pick in the draft this year because they had the worst record last year. We've got a Ryan Mountcastle autograph right there. So a couple months ago, I'd be going crazy about this one. Mountcastle kind of let me down a little bit this year, but we'll see if he can bounce back. That one goes to Patrick Schmitz. Congrats on that one, Patrick. Let's go through the rest of this box and see if we can find the relic. Looks like it's going to be on the other side of that box. Anthony Rizzo, artist palette card right there. There's Nick Madrigal. He had his first major league home run the other night little wall scraper. I think it literally bounced off the top of the wall. A mess of things says, I almost always end up eating Hawaiian barbecue while I watch your live streams. I wonder why that is. Now I'm kind of getting hungry. What did I have for dinner tonight? I had a turkey and Swiss sandwich from a gas station. There's Nate Pearson. Goes to the Blue Jays owner, which is Lloyd. And I had a bag of baked Lay's potato chips. That was my dinner. We got Sixto Sanchez, so not a very good dinner. So I'm probably going to go and uh, grab a snack, which will probably just be eating some peanut butter. Because I don't really have any snacks in the house right now besides that jar of peanut butter. There's Sixto Sanchez. Who we saw in an error earlier where they had Jesus Sanchez featured on the card. All right, next box up, we have two boxes left after this one. This one, then two others. Sean says, hey, Jab, this is my first time watching your stream live. Plus, what cards or boxes should I buy without spending that much money? Well, if you can get your hand on Bowman... That's your best bet out there for retail if you can get uh, a blaster for 20 bucks, That's the way to go. If you are out there on Friday mornings, you'll be able to find Diamond King's blasters. You'll be able to find Heritage. Sometimes you might be able to find Top Series 1, although that's kind of fading out. I think the Heritage blasters usually sell for about 30 bucks on the secondary market, so if you can get it for 20 that's pretty good. Diamond Kings. I don't know what that sells from the secondary market. Probably around 27 to 30 as well. Me, personally, I would go with Heritage over Diamond Kings because I've always been a top guy before Panini. Plus, I really like the 72 design. Velocity says he's Chris Mills' son. Hey, welcome, man. Chris has been in a lot of our breaks over the years, so glad to have you here. He just had a hit not too long ago for the Cardinals. It was a Dylan Carlson autograph. We look for our next hit, and here it is. It's Laody Tavares. And it is going to the Texas Rangers owner, Scott Cochran. So I think that's his second hit today. We had a Sam Huff earlier for him. It's Cronenworth at the back. Teya says, I have a local card shop here in Australia with Heritage in stock. I might buy some boxes on payday. That's pretty cool. I'm wondering, what's the cost of those? And, I, you know, it might be a little bit tough to figure out because of the whole exchange issue. I'm, I'm just wondering if the price of Heritage is a lot higher over there in Australia just because maybe that card store owner had to pay a bunch to get it sent over there and passes the shipping along to customers. Ty Pan says Tatis Tuesdays are a must. It's it's not going to be every Tuesday. Maybe uh, once a month, if that, if he continues to be 
the face of baseball. Hey, Mike Trout's out now, so Tatis can really step up. Like Jeff said earlier, it was four for four today. He's back in a big way. We've got Tristan McKenzie for the Cleveland Indians. So this one goes to Harris. Nice dual relic out of 99. Taya says $200 US for the boxes. So yeah, they're definitely jacking those prices up. I guess when you're the only card store in the entire country, $200 for a heritage, is that a hobby box? It better be a hobby box because if, if they're turning 200 bucks US for a, a blaster, that's preposterous. I don't know. I feel like a hobby box of heritage, you might be able to get for 125 or so. So it's definitely jacked up a little bit. Next box, let's see what we've got in this. Only one more box left after this. And then that'll be it for tonight. Next live stream will probably not be until, I don't know, sometime next week. Got Sterling coming out next week. Brady says, thanks for streaming this. Thanks very much for being here and watching tonight. Let's see if we can find one more big hit on our way out the door here, so to speak. Fender says, thanks for the great content, man. Long time watcher and sub. Thank you very much. And look at this. We get a Hall of Fame coming up. Hall of Famer. We'll save that one for the end of the stack. And we also have a Jack Flaherty who's off to a 7-0 start as of a couple days ago. I don't know if he lost one yet, but... He's been getting some legendary run support, so he could probably have like a six run run average and still be seven out of the way the Cardinals have been hitting behind him. Somewhere Jacob DeGrom watches those Jack Flaherty highlights and just a tear rolls down his face because, as you know, DeGrom never gets any run support. <laughs> DeGrom will pitch like eight innings, give up one run, and still get a loss like all the time for the Mets. It's just really weird how the Mets can never hit behind him. Uh, he's 8-0 now, says Back's Pack. He's really, really doing his thing. A mess of things says everything is more expensive on an island. <laughs> a mess of things. Thanks, man. Really appreciate the support. I hope you guys will check out a mess of things channel. And uh, subscribe over there. As we check out this Hall of Famer right now, it is going to be Yvonne Rodriguez. Yvonne Rodriguez. That's a nice one right there. Bat Kings, game used bat. Texas Ranger hit once again for Scott Cochran. Congratulations on Yvonne Rodriguez. And now let's go to the next stack. Yvonne Rodriguez had a nice long career, Hall of Fame career. Who did he end up with? I think he ended up playing with the Washington Nationals in the twilight of his career. Some of you might remember him mostly as a Texas Ranger. Who else? Florida Marlin, Detroit Tiger, Washington National. Did bounce around a little bit later on in his career. There's Mount Castle. Here comes the next hit. It's Nick Madrigal. That's going to be an autograph. Nick Madrigal, dual relic auto. Nice one right there for the White Sox. That's the, at least their second hit, I think. Derek Cornelson, congratulations. On the Madrigal. That's going to be the last hit from this box, which will take us down to our final box of the night. Box number 24, the final box out of the Master Case. 12 more packs. Let's see what we can find. A mess of things says, who has the record for playing on the most teams? I believe it's Edwin Jackson. And it might have been something like 18 teams. You might remember Edwin Jackson. Just pitched not too long ago. And uh, Mike Morgan, I think, had the record for a little while. He, I think it might have been 13 teams. I can't remember. But Mike Morgan had it. And then I think Edwin Jackson broke that record. Pit the player with the most amount of teams played on. Tyler Stevenson is the hit. That's a nice auto right there with the relics. 
And we'll have one final hit tonight. The Stevenson, by the way, is going to the red zone. That's the Reds' first hit of the night. That one goes to Edward Oliver. So, Edward, you're on the board. Thank you very much. What's my favorite card on my PC? That's a tough question. I don't know if I can come up with an answer to that right now. I have to really think about it. Caitlin says, hey, Jabs, love your videos. Been collecting cards and also balls because of you. Thanks, Caitlin. Thank you very much for the support. Thanks for watching. I haven't done any baseball collecting in a few years, but um, definitely used to have fun running around there in empty stadiums and doing that. Last stack of the night. Here we go. And we have a Paven Smith, Arizona Diamondbacks, is going to be our final hit for Cape Cod Junk Removal. Check the rest of these out. Let's see if we get anything crazy that sneaks its way in here. There's a Jimmy Fox framed card, plum frame. Kruger says, hey, Jabs, could we do some 2018 Acuna hunting and Soto on Patreon like we did with Tatis? Yeah, I actually just bought a whole case of 2018 updates, so we'll be doing that at some point in the next couple weeks. I don't know what to call it, though. Soto Saturday, but Soto's not even like the, the big guy in that set right now. He hasn't been like Acuna, I think, has eclipsed him this year. But his cards are still worth a ton of money. We've got a Kyle Lewis out of 25. And final card of the break, it is going to be Joe Adele, Diamond Kings, debut Diamond Kings. So that's it for tonight, everybody. Thank you very much for hanging out with us for the last uh, 101 minutes. Really appreciate your support. That's our Diamond Kings Master Box. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow with a standalone video. We'll have 2008 Upper Deck, there's going to be three hits in that box. We'll have a Bowen Mega face-off Friday. And we'll have a Saturday showdown of Tops Tier 1. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So you come back for all of our videos we post every day. So have a great rest of your Wednesday, and I will see you all tomorrow. Good night, everybody.